because back in the mid 90s queen latifah this is when all you bitches didn't know that the that the latifah was sucking on the vagina okay you bitches was 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 delusioning about who this lady was <laughs> Well, hello there, love bugs. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment respectfully. And if you are not already a part of this book club, please hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes, you can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's move on to our next book. I decided to move forward in time to the 90s. This is I Regret the Day I Lost My Virginity. You Are Not Your Past. By SWV's Leanne Lily Lyons. I never felt good enough. I never felt accomplished. I definitely didn't feel successful. To me, anything that was considered successful didn't feel like a failure. My dream had me surrounded by many people who didn't think I was great at pretty much anything, but never took the time to show me how to get there. I know you're probably thinking, girl, you guys sold millions and millions of records. How could you say that? Yes, that we did, but technically our label was successful. The writers and producers were successful, but I never felt that we were. All that all the years of hard work that it took to pull off what we've done. I don't have anything but dusty plaques and memories to show for it, but this wall, but this was still my dream. This dream had me feeling like I was in the sunken place and couldn't get out. I was smiling and singing with two of the most talented women traveling all over the world. Songs in heavy rotation made a little money and shared the same stage with some of the industry's best. All of this going on in my life, but yet I still felt like the prisoner with the broom. But only my broom was a microphone. As popularity began to grow, my bank account could never catch up with it. It seemed the more I smiled, the more I was challenged and put. You sick of this? As popularity began to grow, my bank account could never catch up with it. It seemed the more I smiled, the more I was challenged and put in some of the toughest situations. It seemed like the dream just didn't want me to be great. And neither did the powers that be in it. Eventually, you take the gloves off and start fighting. And when this happens, you just close your eyes and dream again. You have to remember why you started dreaming in the first place. Remember the joy that dreams bring, despite the struggle that may come along with them. The dream I lived may not have been perfect, but it was mine. I was able to do what I love with two amazing, talented women, and I am forever Grateful for the many supporters that has sustained us for all these years, even through our mess and just trying to figure out what this whole thing was about. It was a hot summer day at my parents' apartment on the Grand Concourse in Bronx, New York. This day was special and exciting because it wasn't often we had company and got to fire up the grill, so we had a lot to look forward to. You know, when colored folks get together, it's always about food and drinks. Anyway, this particular day was really cool because my Uncle Bill and his wife, Elsie, was coming over. 
Uncle Bill was always very special to everybody, especially the kids. He was high yellow with beautiful blue eyes to die for. Thinking of Uncle Bill is always funny because although I was a child, I couldn't help but notice his admiration for women's boobs. Uncle Bill didn't care who you were, married or not, young or old. If you had big, beautiful boobs, he was going to be your best friend. It made all the sense in the world because his wife, Elsie, had the biggest boobs I had ever seen. You couldn't help but catch a glimpse of them whenever she was around, to be honest. They were very damn distracting for no reason at Speaking all. Speaking of Elsie, she wasn't a beautiful woman at all, but rather very masculine looking with everything on her that says she's a woman. She kind of reminds you of a watered down version of Queen Latifah, very brolic in stature, but you can tell she's a lady. I couldn't tell Queen Latifah was a lady. The only thing that made me think that she was a lady, cause she was built so bad. Queen Latifah, I don't know you like that lady. Actually I do, because back in the mid nineties, Queen Latifah, this is when all you bitches didn't know that the, that the Latifah was sucking on the vagina. Okay, you bitches was, was, was delusioning about who this lady was. Back in the day in the nineties, when I was in my gaydom full force, she used to come down to, I think it was Club 55. And, um, damn, it was Club 55, but it was a club right next door to Club 55. I cannot think of the name of it. But she used to come down and host, um, like, basketball events with the Bull Daggers down in the D.C. It was like D.C. Bull Daggers versus New York Bull Daggers. Um, there was nothing about her that looked feminine. Nothing. Except for them big-ass titties. That's it. And then she eventually got rid of them. And she's still bad, Bill. I have to mention that Queen is way more attractive than she ever was. Elsie was very friendly with all of my sisters, but she was extra friendly with me for some reason. She'd always bring me things like candy and walk me to the store across the street. I never thought anything of it because she was Aunt Elsie, Uncle Bill's wife. She was harmless as far as I was concerned, especially since she wasn't a stranger. When I think about our trips to the store, I'd always get this lollipop that I didn't necessarily want, but I got because she suggested it. The lollipop was good, but it was very messy. I had sticky stuff all over my hands and it was tough to get off. I know you're probably wondering, what does the lollipop have to do with anything, right? Well, a sticky, messy lollipop that was all over my hands, face, and shirt meant she'd have to take me to the bathroom to get me all cleaned up. I would have never known the events that would take place the next couple of visits would change my life and views about love, relationships, and sex for the rest of my life. Y'all, we about to get into some shiz that is very uncomfortable for me. And I know it was uncomfortable for Lily to put it in this book and to put it on paper. Oh, my God. Girl, when you are a victim of abuse and for you to be able to put it on black and white the way that you did, girl, kudos to you, girl. Kudos to you, because I'm telling you, it was just painful for me to read. Now, I'm going to read you some, but I'm not going to read you all, because if you want to know the entire details, you're going to have to buy the book. I told you, I'm not here to be your audible. Ain't nobody paying me to be an audible for them, okay? Nobody. By the way, hit that join button here on the YouTube, or go down in the description bar and hit the link to become a member on Patreon, all right? But outside of that, ain't nobody paying me to be there audible. Go buy the book. I was only eight years old the first time I was physically touched. Over the course of three years, I was molested by my uncle's wife, Elsie. 
the one person who was nice to me would be the one to take advantage of my innocence and take me on a actual journey mentally that I was way too young to experience. Those trips to the bathroom was nothing more than a ploy for her to be a edophile, to do me what she probably did to some other little girl somewhere else. What did I tell you? If they do it, it's probably because they've done it before and got away with it. So don't you think ever that you are the first one ever, 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 ever to do to me what she probably did to some other little girl somewhere else. Although it's a little tough for me to talk about sometimes, I can remember this one trip to my mother's bathroom clear as day. It went like this. Y'all, I, let me, okay, let me surmise this. Mm -mm -mm. mm. Y'all finna be mad at me because I can't do it. I just, I can't do it, y'all. I'm sorry. When Uncle Bill and Elsie left to go home that evening, I was so confused. I was haunted by the images I saw in that bathroom. The whole experience was just a little too much for me. I had so many questions and no answers. Was I still a virgin? Did I do something wrong? Why was this such a big secret? I had no answers to my own questions. I just played the quiet game. After three years of olesting me, Aunt Elsie would eventually pass away, and all I had was memories. I'd go through middle school confused as hell, not knowing if I should be with a boy or a girl. Besides, the only experience I had was with a grown woman who was no longer here to talk to me about my confused mind. It wasn't until sixth grade during a ex education class where I first realized what I had experienced wasn't right. I was actually molested. I would sit through class in a sweat trying to get certain thoughts out of my system. Me being molested by my uncle's wife was my secret until I turned 19 years old. I finally was able to tell my sister Jeanette what happened to me. I never got into depth about this because I was so young and everyone would feel responsible for what happened to me. I would go on years haunted by the LC spirit and I displayed it every chance I got. For a long time, I was so confused about my actuality or should I say gender wasn't an issue for me. Keep in mind, I was violated before I could even have my first conversation about sex. I never thought about it because I had nothing to compare it to. For a long time, I just didn't understand what was going on with me, how to think, etc. I found myself angry at the woman who did this to me. I needed to talk to her and she wasn't there for me. She left stuck in my emotions and I found it hard to move on. I hated the fact that I couldn't talk to anyone about our secret. I was left alone trying to find a hiding place, a place to hide this secret in hopes that I'd soon forget. Besides, no one would ever know anyway if I did tell them. But one day I was laying in my bed over the covers in my parents' full-size bed. The door was open because I had nothing to hide. My father just happened to go to the bathroom and the unthinkable happened. I was caught with my hands in my private parts. What the hell are you doing? I jumped up and said nothing. He said, don't ever let me see you doing that again, you hear? Lord, if I could have jumped out the window at that very moment to hear my father's loud intimidating voice scared the hell out of me. I knew at that very moment that I must have been doing something wrong. I was a little kid just trying to touch myself like Aunt Elsie did. Something isn't right. I'm taking you to the doctor. I made a left on MLK. Oh, what a beautiful day, what a beautiful day.